In this video, you will learn everything you need to know about service meshes with detailed notes and hands-on project. I will explain you what is service mesh, how they actually work, service mesh architecture, different types of service meshes used in the industry and also explaining different features of service meshes through a live project which we deploy on Minikube cluster using Istio service mesh. Make sure you watch this video till the end. Let's go. Now before we start with learning service mesh, I have this detailed notes created which includes all the definitions, diagrams, explaining service mesh, its architecture, real life case studies and also links to help you learn service mesh properly. If you want me to share this document with you, comment below service mesh and I will share the PDF in the video description. Let's start. Alright, to properly understand service mesh, let's start with a scenario. Imagine you are an engineer working in an e-commerce company like Amazon and you're working on a monolith application which is a single large code base for handling users, managing orders, inventory and payments. Everything is working fine but the company is growing so you want to move from monolith architecture to microservices architecture. Now with this microservices architecture you have separate services and they are all communicating with each other. So you have different services like user service for handling user accounts, order service for processing orders, inventory to track stocks and also payments for handling payment. For this e-commerce application to work properly, these microservices need to communicate with each other. So the user service is going to talk to inventory or user service might talk to order service and so on. Microservices architecture are good for scaling and for big companies, but they come with different problems. So the first problem we face is authentication and authorization. We know that the services are going to talk to each other and for every request, it should be authenticated and authorized. Every microservices need to handle logins and permissions separately and you can do this by adding the code inside every microservice and whenever you add a new microservice you need to add the code for login or for authorization in that service as well which is a repetitive task. Second problem you face is hard to debug. Whenever there is a problem it is very difficult to troubleshoot and to find out where the problem is. For example let's say customers are complaining that the orders are failing randomly and you try to look into the logs of the application and you found out that the problem is with the payments service but you don't know if the problem is due to network glitch or if it is due to the load spikes or due to faulty service update so troubleshooting is difficult third problem is security risk these services communicate with each other but the data that they share is not encrypted so for example a user is trying to add credit card details this information is not encrypted and anyone can actually get that information if there is no security so there's a huge security risk when working with microservices. Next problem that we face is load balancing. Let's say the order page is getting huge traffic but the inventory page is not getting that much traffic. So we need to handle traffic properly. And lastly, slow rollout and deployments. So consider you have a new version of payment service and you want this version to be shown only to 10% of the users which is also known as canary deployment. Handling this deployment could be a very difficult task when using microservices. So all these problems can be solved using service mesh. Let's look at the definition. A service mesh is nothing but an infrastructure layer that manages service to service communication within a distributed microservices architecture. It abstracts away networking concerns thereby providing things like security which is through mutual TLS, traffic management via intelligent routing, load balancing and retries, also observability because these service mesh can be integrated with tools like Prometheus, Grafana etc. and also resilience by using circuit breakers and fault injection. Now before service mesh, companies used to manually manage service to service communication by adding the code in each microservice or by using reverse proxies like Nginx, HAProxy, load balancers, API gateway. But this was very difficult and there were used to be different problems that we have seen here. So all these problems can be easily solved with service mesh. Netflix also uses Istio service mesh and you can read this blog where you can understand how Netflix started using service mesh, what problem they faced before using service mesh. Netflix created their own internal tools to start with which is Eureka for service discovery and Ribbon as well for IPC, inter-process communication. But later on they moved to service mesh like Istio. So now that we understood what is a service mesh, let's look at the service mesh architecture. The architecture consists of two important things which is the control plane and the data plane. So the control plane here is going to be managing the data plane and the data plane consists of the microservices along with a sidecar proxy. So this proxy is used to handle everything that we face here. Proxy is going to handle authorization, authentication, it will also have observability, 
It will also do communication through mutual TLS, load balancing and also canary deployments. This is how it works. It consists of data plane and a control plane. You can read about it here. A data plane consists of each microservices running alongside with a sidecar proxy. If you don't know what is a sidecar, a sidecar is another container that is going to run along with your microservice in a pod. A good example of this proxy is Envoy proxy that is used in Istio service mesh and this sidecar proxy can provide you with all these different benefits or they are responsible for all these different things. Whereas control plane is used to manage the sidecar proxy and also to apply traffic rules, security policy and observability settings. So this is the architecture of service mesh. So now you might have understood without service mesh, the service talks to each other manually with custom retry logic, no security. Whereas using service mesh, you have a proxy where a service is going to talk to each other through a proxy, which is going to handle retries, which will have security, also have monitoring and everything else. Now in the market, there are different types of service mesh like Linkerd, Istio. You also have console by HashiCorp or AWS app mesh. I have a link here which will help you understand different service mesh and also their comparison. So if you want to know which service mesh is good for you, you can read this blog here and you can also scroll down to see the comparison. So this Istio is created by Google, IBM and Lyft. Linkerd is created by Biont. Istio uses Envoy proxy. It can also be using ambient mesh. Linkerd uses Linkerd to proxy. AWS app mesh uses Envoy proxy and so on. So this is a great link. If you want me to share this document, let me know in the comment section. Now to explain you different features of service mesh, I have this project deployed on Minikube using Istio service mesh and using this project, I will explain you how mutual TLS, load balancing, observability, etc. work in service mesh. Alright, so I have this book info application deployed on my machine. It is deployed on Minikube and it has different microservices like the details microservice, product page, ratings and three different versions of reviews microservices. As you can see, these microservices have two pods running and one of the image is the microservices itself. Other one is the proxy, which is the Istio proxy. To show you that, I'm going to do kubectl describe pod. And let's use this. So if you look at different images used in this, you can see, scroll down. In the container section here, you can see the image used here is the book info details image. Whereas the second image used is the Istio proxy. So in service mesh, you have a sidecar container running along with your main container. This is a book info application, which you can also find on the official Istio page. It consists of different microservices written in different language. So the product page is written in Python. The ratings page is written in Node.js. Reviews are written in Java, whereas Ruby is used to create details microservices. Using this project, I'm going to show you different features, which includes mutual TLS, load balancing, etc. If you want a detailed video explaining how to deploy this book info application on Minikube or any Kubernetes cluster, please let me know in the comment section so you can also do the same demo with me. To start with, let's understand how you can use service mesh to monitor your microservices. Istio can be used along with Grafana, Prometheus and also Kiali. Let's go ahead and apply this. So I'm going to apply and we have Grafana, Jaeger, Kiali, Loki, Prometheus. I'm going to be applying them one by one. Okay. To start using it, you can simply say Istio CTL dashboard and the name of the app, which is Kiali here. And you can see this is the Kiali dashboard. Now in this dashboard, you can see different things like traffic graph. I'm going to select default namespace because this is where my microservices are present. And you can see all the different microservices now. So you can see communication between the product page going to the version one reviews and so on using Kiali, you can get more information about your microservices like how they are communicating what are different applications workload services configuration and lot more right now these services are communicating with each other which is not encrypted so to encrypt it we can use something known as mutual tls so let me show you how you can enable that as you can see here mutual tls will help you with securing communications between microservices i'm going to simply apply this manifest file and go here and apply this. Now that this is applied, let's go here, refresh the page and you can see very soon, if I just enable security. So now you can see mutual TLS is enabled. This means every microservices is talking to each other and the data transfer is encrypted. This is how service mesh like Istio can be used to enable encryption between different microservices. 
Now let me show you how you can use service mesh for traffic distribution. In our application here, we have different microservices. We have three different versions of reviews. Let's apply a manifest file, which is a virtual service, which will tell that 80% of traffic should go to reviews version one and 20% should go to reviews version two. Right now, if I show you the application here has three different versions of reviews. This is the third version. This is the second version. And this is the first version with no stars. So when I make the change, it will only be showing the first and the second version, which means 20% of traffic will go to the second version and 80% of traffic will go to the first version. So let's apply this. And it is applied. Now, if I refresh my page, you can see most of the time it is always showing us the first version. And then sometimes it will show us the second version, which is the 20% of the traffic. So this is how you can use service mesh to manage traffic distribution as well. Similarly, there are more scenarios here, which you can try out to understand how service mesh actually works. If you want to deploy this project, you can use the official documentation or you can let me know in the comment section. I can create a separate video explaining how to deploy a book info application using service mesh. I in fact also have documentation here about how to deploy it. So all the steps and the commands are present in this document. Additionally, if you also want to use Grafana or Prometheus, you simply need to say Istio CTL dashboard Grafana. Since Grafana is already installed, we can also use it here and then go to dashboards. In this dashboard, you can find Istio and you can find dashboards for your workload, mesh, control plane, etc. So here you can see metrics. Similarly, you can also do this for uh, Prometheus because we have also installed Prometheus. So instead of Grafana, I'll say Prometheus. And this will open a Prometheus dashboard. So service mesh can be used with different monitoring services. So now we have understood what problems do service mesh solve and how we can use it in our microservices application. So here are different benefits. Now let's understand when to use service mesh. You will be using service mesh only when you have more than five services, because if you have less microservices, adding a service mesh would be too much of overhead and extra work. So you will have to be using service mesh when you have multiple microservices and you want to manage them properly. So 10 plus microservices is where you will be using it. When you have multi-cloud or hybrid deployments, you can use service mesh. When you have applications that require high security environments, you can use service mesh because it provides you with features like mutual TLS or centralized authentication. I also have different scenarios where you can restrict access to your microservices based on different roles or using JWT token, etc. Along with this, this document also includes some case studies of how Airbnb is using service mesh like Istio, how Stripe use service mesh for mutual TLS, Netflix and so on. And also a few links to explain you more about service mesh. So this was our video on service mesh. I hope this video was informative. If you have any questions, any doubt, do let me know in the comment section. And if you want me to share these notes, comment down service mesh in the comment section. Also, let me know if you want a separate video to deploy book info application on Istio service mesh. Bye.